Let's do an example to use the equations that describe electron spin resonance. What is the resonance frequency in gigahertz of an unpaired electron in a 0.5 Tesla magnetic field? Uh, recall that initially if you have s equal one half an unpaired electron we can have m sub s equal plus one half or m sub s equal minus one half. So when we put this in a magnetic field, you have a splitting just like you had for electrons in the Zeeman effect and so on, where this is m sub s equal plus one half and this is m sub s equal minus one half. Now what we've done is applied a magnetic field of 0 0.5 Tesla and now we have a splitting because of that magnetic field and this splitting here is given by the equation delta E is the electron G factor times the Bohr magneton times the magnetic field times M sub s. What we want is the complete splitting, the total splitting here and maybe you could see that m sub s equals one half for this particular one and m sub s equal minus one half for there when you subtract the two one half minus minus one half will give you one so the energy level splitting the total energy level splitting here delta e will be just these three terms here the gyro magnetic ratio or not sorry the electron g factor times the Bohr magneton times the magnetic field B. We want the resonance frequency so recall that this implies that the resonance frequency nu you divide by H to get the resonance frequency in Hertz so this would just be GE mu B times the magnetic field divided by H. Let's put those numbers in. GE for an unpaired electron is about equal to 2. The Bohr magneton is a constant 9.27 times 10 to the minus 24th. B, it was 5 Tesla. We're putting everything in SI units, so our frequency will be in Hertz here. H is 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34th. We put that in, we get 1.4 times 10 to the 10th Hertz, or 14 gigahertz. So that's the so-called resonance frequency of an unpaired electron in a 0 0.5 Tesla magnetic field. This gives you an indication gigahertz, so it looks like electron spin resonance, that spectroscopy occurs in the gigahertz range, similar to what you would expect for microwave spectroscopy or rotational spectroscopy. So the energies you're putting in here are about the same within a few orders of magnitude as the energies you put to excite rotations in molecules.